Hey guys, so I always wanted to try to measure temperature with something like a semiconductor. And it's very much possible, but I've never done it personally. And uh, I just wanted to try it out and see if it would be a fun video uh, to do, to show you guys that it is possible and it's pretty simple. Now, I was messing around with uh, thermocouples before this. And uh, after realizing how hard it would be to amplify that tiny signal coming out of the thermocouple, I uh, wanted to try this method of measuring temperature. Now thermocouples and uh, resistive temperature devices are usually reserved for you know higher temperature ranges when you're dealing with ovens, kilns, uh, things like that. Uh, with the semiconductors, they range from negative 55 to plus 150 degrees C. Uh, that's also negative 131 to uh, plus 302 degrees Fahrenheit for those uh, in the USA. Now, I wouldn't test these semiconductors at um, exclusively those uh, extreme temperature ranges, but it's nice to um, just play around with these things because uh, they're so plentiful. You can find uh, diodes and transistors uh, just on about every single board that you take apart from toys, electronics, whatever it may be. Basically, every single semiconductor, whether it be a diode or a transistor, has a p-n junction. Now this, we're talking about the very basics of electronics, very basics of how electronics work. Um, they have a p-n junction, and uh, basically what that means is that um, there's a p-type semiconductor material that likes to accept electrons, and then there's an n-type um, semiconductor material that likes to give electrons and the interaction between those two semiconductors um, makes up what you see in front of you basically the transistor and the diode now if you ever worked with diodes you know there's a forward voltage drop uh, and that is around 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts and now that voltage is required across the uh, diode in order for it to start working, start conducting. And here you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the forward voltage drop of the diode in the middle right here. So where the red alligator clip is, I have my um, positive side of my power supply connected. And uh, that's running at like five or, or seven volts. And it really doesn't matter if you put in 5 volts or 12 volts, um, anything that the diode can handle uh, is fine. And this white alligator clip is the, the ground, and these bigger alligator clips right here, right uh, across the diode, is uh, my multimeter that's measuring the forward voltage drop. Uh, the resistor over here is just to prevent the power supply from shorting itself out. This can be a 1K ohm resistor, but uh, you can really use any resistor that works and doesn't short out the power. <laughs> anyway, to get back to the point of why I set this up, it's to show you the relationship between this diode's PN junction and uh, heat. So if I bring a flame uh, very close to the diode, you can see that it can change the voltage drop dramatically. As more heat or resistance builds up in the, in the p-n junction, less current is allowed to flow through the diode, which means that, uh, well, it starts turning off. Now, I also have an ice cube over here, and I can show you when I apply uh, something very cold to the diode, the um, voltage drop starts uh, to go up. Now, we're helping the diode by cooling it down, and since there's less heat, and less resistance, um, more current can flow. Now the coefficient, or basically the relationship between this forward voltage and uh, the temperature, is approximately around 2.2 millivolts to one degree Celsius. And if you plot this on a line graph, you would see that it's fairly linear, meaning we can take advantage of this and exploit this feature uh, to allow us to measure temperature. 
So I know I just demonstrated the diode portion, but you can do this with transistors, whether it be PNP or NPN transistors, it doesn't really matter. Because pretty much every single semiconductor device has a PN junction. It just depends on how you connect up your device to make it act as a diode. So here I have the base and the collector tied together to ground on the PNP transistor and uh, I have my power coming in through the emitter because the diode is orientated this way, right, into the transistor. And on the NPN transistor, the, the diode is on the emitter, again, just like on the PNP, but it's orientated out from the transistor. And so that means um, we put in our power at the base and collector and we put our ground at the emitter. Now you can also put transistors in series like this or uh, just put uh, diodes in series to get a bigger forward voltage drop and uh, thus you have more voltage to work with. Now when you're connecting your sensor over to your Arduino, it, it might be a little tricky only because when you were measuring the forward voltage drop on your multimeter, you were, you know, using a different device to do that and you weren't sharing grounds or, or anything like that. Um, and here on the Arduino, um, everything is really referenced to ground. So it may be a little tricky to um, connect both power and a way to um, sense that forward voltage drop on the same device. Now after doing a bit of research, I came across this solution and you only need two pins and this is very clever but I wasn't the one to um, think of doing it this way so I'll give credit where credit is due and you can uh, check out the original page and code for all of this um, in the description. Now what we're doing here is connecting the power over to an analog pin and uh, just connecting the, the ground side over to ground. Now, the analog pin does two things. It both powers the sensor and it reads the forward voltage drop. And it can do that because the analog pin can be set as an input in the code and at the same time, you can also set that input to be pulled up and so you're actually referencing that analog pin to uh, VCC uh, or the positive power rail. All right, so now on the coding side of things, I want to explain step by step uh, what's going on. And I think uh, probably the best way to do that is to start from scratch. So up here you see that we have configured our uh, pin, so uh, the analog pin zero, uh, as an input, and we have also pulled that pin up. So it's positive, it powers the sensor basically. Uh, we begin our serial communication, and then we um, set up a floating variable uh, set to the analog read of that uh, analog pin. And so um, this microcontroller is reading that pin for information. We can see that the raw information that's coming from the sensor right now is uh, this number, basically 155. And this is not the number that we want. We obviously want a temperature reading and not some random 155 uh, analog to digital converter value. So um, we have to take some steps in order to convert this number into a temperature reading. All right, and this is how we do it. We know, first of all, that we have a 155 analog to digital converter value. We also know that, um, roughly speaking, for every one degree Celsius, um, that equals 2.2 millivolts. And uh, now we can begin to do some calculations. We multiply the 155 value by 4.88 millivolts. And this 4.88 comes from um, dividing 5,000 millivolts by uh, 1,023. Um, so 5,000 millivolts being 5 volts, and 5 volts powers the Arduino. 1,023 comes from the maximum analog to digital converter value. By dividing these numbers, we get 4.88 millivolts per value. So now that we know that one value is equal to 4.88 millivolts, well, we divide that by 155 to get us um, the total millivolt number. Now, basically what we have done here is we have equaled this 155 value 
uh, to 756.4 value right here. So we have connected these two values. Now keep in mind that this uh, millivolt total that we got here is actually equal to the ambient temperature because, you know, that's what the sensor is measuring at the moment and that's what this 155 um, analog to digital converter value reflects. But if we were to convert um, this millivolt total into temperature now, we would get an incorrect reading. And so we also have to account for um, the change in temperature and the way we do that is we take that number that changes with the temperature and we compare it to a constant. So when the constant and the number that we get from the sensor are the same, well then we get zero difference, right? Because there's zero difference in temperature. But when uh, we compare a different value from the sensor to the constant, well then we either get a positive or negative difference, right? That value would then be divided by um, the coefficient, the relationship between uh, the temperature and the millivolts. Um, and that roughly comes out to 0 0.45. Um, and if you turn it into a decimal, you would be multiplying. And this is actually the same thing. Whether or not you divide the difference by 1 over 2.2 or you multiply the difference by 0 0.45, you're doing the same thing. And you get um, degrees in Celsius. So obviously that would be your change in temperature. And you have to compare that change in temperature to your ambient temperature. And that would be your constant. And once you subtract your ambient constant from your change in temperature, well then you get your actual temperature. And that's how it all works. And you can see in the code I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm taking the reading from the pin and I'm multiplying that by 4.8 which is coming from the 5 volts and the um, analog to digital converter value. And then it's going into here where that value is being compared to our constant, which is our bias. That equals our difference in millivolts and then turning that difference in millivolts into um, actual temperature uh, is done by multiplying it by uh, 0 0.45, which is the same thing as dividing that difference by 1 over 2.2. And then subtracting that result from the ambient uh, temperature constant that we have up here, then we get the actual temperature. Ideally, what you would want to do is to take multiple readings and uh, average them out so you get a more stable temperature reading. Yeah, you might want to take multiple readings and turn them into an average because um, the number tends to be a little unstable. All right, so I'm just going to take off this cover to put the sensor inside and... Ugh, look at that. That's disgusting. So now what I've done is attached my transistor uh, which I configured as a diode and attached it with some thermal paste to this uh, CPU. Now uh, on this CPU uh, is another sensor, a built-in sensor, uh, that can also display the temperature in the BIOS. And so basically what I want to do is uh, see the temperature that the CPU detects and compare it to the temperature that this uh, transistor detects and just compare to see how accurate uh, this homemade uh, sensor is. So with the computer turned off uh, and the sensor running, I'm getting about uh, 20 degrees Celsius and that's uh, ambient temperature. And uh, these values are obviously not averaged at all, so that's why they're jumping around a little bit. So I just turned on the computer and uh, I'm reading 20 Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, Right now, the temperatures are about the same. Um, the sensor is actually picking up a little bit on the temperature. It, it was right around 20, but now it's bouncing up. Uh, it's getting closer to 24 degrees Celsius. I've also stopped the fan entirely so I could see the heat go up uh, more dramatically. All right, so now the BIOS is telling uh, us that the temperature of the CPU is right around 32 degrees Celsius. And over here on my laptop, uh, what I'm getting from my uh, DIY sensor 
is actually pretty close if you uh, ignore all the bouncing values and just you know look in the middle at, at the pretty much average point uh, you can see it's like 33 degrees and that's not bad at all for uh, a temperature uh, reading straight off the heat sink that is loosely connected over to this uh, homemade sensor. <laughs> And yeah, I hope that uh, displays that this temperature uh, sensor is not half bad at all.